Uh, good evening, everybody. Good. Yes. I was happy get to have a such a wonderful uh, gathering. It's, uh, uh, it is a blessing to meet you here together. And uh, it is a great blessing to celebrate for the IPAD new church movement. This, uh, I uh, didn't know uh, uh, that uh, uh, I could uh, present about the NAPAD ministry before two years ago. At the time, I just worked as a regional staff here. They, uh, they were my boss. <laughs> yes, the Susan and Dan. Yeah, they were uh, my teacher, friend, mentor, the everything for my disciples ministry. It's so nice. This is so happy to have a, such a wonderful gathering here uh, in the Pacific Southwest region. It's my spiritual hometown. It's so great. Yeah, I appreciate you so much for your attending today's NAPAD night for Dr. Gunyu Tabernacle Fund. For the last two years after Dr. Yu retired, I tried to visit NAPAD churches mm -hmm and to meet the congregation leaders, including the APAD pastors, very intensively. Uh, I visited NAPAD churches almost every week. What I felt, what I realized through this journey, church planting movement is not just a part of NAPAD ministries, but it is the main component and even center of the whole NAPAD ministries. In the last two years, we have 18 new congregations, 18 new NAPAD churches were established in five regions. We could celebrate for new Pacific Asian congregations, new ethnic churches, for example, Indo-Pakistani congregation in Colorado. Karen Congregation in New York, Tongan Congregation in Colorado, too. Chuck Community was established, Chuck Disciples Congregation was established in St. Louis. The 55% of the whole Naped congregation are the churches planted in the last 10 years. Almost all Naped churches are new congregations. We, we, we are new church movement. I dare to prophesy <laughs> the future of disciples and NAPED. NAPED community will develop very excitingly and comprehensively through such a new movement. The gift, gifts, and talents given to new congregations and their leaders was so great and so beautiful. I met some wonderful pastors and congregations. They had a great gift I never had in my life. It's a blessing for disciples. Also, I can see they are full of passion for proclaiming the gospel towards the world. They do not afraid about financial need. They do not afraid of this, uh, of the need of facilities. They never gave up proclaiming gospel to the world. You know, in many cases, the first immigrant communities need churches assistance from opening new bank account to seeking for attorney to have their visa status. Their new church movement is expected as a movement of holies. It is a real disciple congregation, I believe. For example, Atlanta, Joe Christian Church in Atlanta must hire social worker to support congregations. Liang Kaifel asked me to support this ministry. At first time, I couldn't understand why you hire a social worker in church. 
I was shamed because I did not understand fully about their situation. They really need social worker. It is not just a secular job. It's a holy job to support the congregation. Their ministry is closely connected to secular life. There is no separation between religious work and our living work. It is NAPAD ministry. Now sometimes NAPAD pastors must be superman and superwoman. <laughs> Sometimes I pretend to be a superman, even though I'm so weak. But I believe God will give us the power and strength and wisdom to support such a wonderful congregation. I believe Dr. Youth Covenant Fund can support this movement very effectively and very wonderfully. So I pray that through the Dr. Youth Covenant Fund, NAPAD can grow as a mutual community to support other communities too. We wanted to be a server for uh, helping uh, the people who need Jesus Christ in this world. I hope that God bless you here. Thank you very much for your coming to this wonderful place. Thank you. When you say that someone has left a legacy, there are two levels. One, as a minister, is the personal level. You've often heard how PKs are some of the worst kids on earth because their parents are not there. When I went to college, it was the PKs at the Paul that would do all kinds of really obnoxious stuff, but not his children. And thanks to his wonderful wife, his wonderful wife, and as a team, she supported them. And his children, as you know, even when they were young, they, they were called to serve and under general church. I remember I went to one meeting and I looked around and I said, how come in the general youth council there are no Asians? And then they said, well, we don't have any, we can't find any. I said, well, I made a couple of phone calls, and guess what? His children served on the General Youth Council, right? And that was the beginning of their support of the General Church. And part of his legacy is the support of his children, their wives, their grandchildren, helps our church grow. That is also the legacy on a personal level. It's not just what the minister does, but when his children and grandchildren continues to support the whole church through the Christian Church Disciples of Christ is a living, wonderful legacy that will go on. Now the second great legacy is, as you know, in 1991, we only had Japanese, Korean, and Filipino congregations, only three languages, such a singe, you know, such a singe. And so he said, oh, we should look and see about other folks. And why did we change our name to NAPAD? We were first AAD, Ameri Asian American Disciples and American Asian Disciples. Sarah Sopa Inari came on the scene. He was, where, Nguni? Where was he from, Sarasopa Inari? Samoa. He, is, he was a great, and still is a great rugby player and a disciple minister. And he came on the scene and he said, um, pardon me, but AAD does not include me, you know, I'm not Asian. And Dr. Yu said, you're right. That was the start when we changed our name to be included. And then he said, well, I will just have to go on out and get more congregations, Samoans, you know, Pacific Islanders. I have to do that. Actually, I didn't really quite believe him <laughs> because we didn't have any. It was the UCCs who had them, but he did. And look at the legacy. From three languages, there were over 13. 
And it's kind of hard to say how many congregations we actually have, so we thought we would go by the legalistic way, whoever is listed in the yearbook. And a lot of folks are kind of in between being listed in the yearbook. So actually when he, when he retired, there were like 110, but we couldn't count 88 in the yearbook, so we thought we'd better do it that way. Uh, and there were all these different languages, different folks. I don't know how he handled that. See, the legacy is celebrating Christ's redeeming presence by accepting diversity. And he often said, we need everybody. We need the conservative person over there who thinks, hey, if you dance, you're going to go straight to hell. We also need the really ultra-liberals on the other side. We need everyone. I am a first-generation immigrant to this country. So I know what it's like to have your feet in both places. You worry about your family in, and who are in another place. Um, you, you know, and you feel sad you cannot be there for all the different festivities uh, because, because we have chosen to be here. It's not an easy decision. It's always fraught with pain and grief. Always. So the gift of immigrant churches here is to teach each and every one of us how to live in two worlds. Because when you're a Christian, as a Christian, we live in one world, and then we have the other world. How do we balance that? And I think Dr. Reverend Yu has very beautifully incarnated that balance. And because he could have that balance, our churches are growing by leaps and bounds. And ironically now, in Indiana, I'm the regional elder, um, you know, looking after the four NAPAT churches, and Dr. Yu is pastor of Bethel Christian Church. So I can trot on over there and say, how are you doing? Do you have any needs you need to tell the region? Isn't that ironic? But it's been such a pleasure. And at the same time, as he was saying, I go to our little Zoe church, and they meet in a home. And, and I preached there, and the pastor translated into Zoe. It was so humbling. The women and children, we all sat on the floor. And uh, I even felt embarrassed having to stand because they were on the floor. I felt like sitting down with them on the floor. And for communion, they had this little hamburger bun. I thought it was really cool. And then it incarnated what the early church is. People meeting in households. And you talk about the social agencies. I had to tell them, oh, you can apply for this health care. You need to do this. And I became like a social worker to this tiny Zoe congregation. But it was wonderful. I felt the Holy Spirit there. And then I felt for the first time what he felt when he got all these people to come and join our church, his gift of hospitality. And I, know, and, and I want to thank everyone for being here, and of course, I'm going to have to end, and uh, thank you very much. And now we invite Dr. Yu to come up to give his comments. It was fantastic guy named Kun Hee Yu, but... <laughs> This is a real Kuni Yu, humble servant. I would like to thank Reverend Chen, Executive Pastor for North American Pacific Asian Disciples and NAPAD Board of Directors for this gorgeous dinner and for allowing me to be here tonight. It is such a great honor to be recognized as the Kuni Yu Covenant Fund for New Church Development. I'm humbled to be named as the legacy of NAPED Ministries while being well alive. <laughs> it reminds me what Douglas MacArthur, American general and commander of Allied forces in the Pacific in World War II, he said, old soldiers never die. 
they just fade away. How happy I am to see my baby is growing healthy and strong. Keep growing, baby, keep growing. <laughs> our goal for NAPED, our goal for NAPED Ministries is to have 200 healthy churches by 2020. Is it still alive and valid? You better say, yes, it is. <laughs> Every time I take a flight, I'm always mindful and grateful of the many people who make a successful journey possible, the known pilots and the unknown ground crew. We always, we always honor the dedicated pilots of our ministry who sit at the control of as the NAPED ministries soar it into orbit. But we must honor the ground crew without whose labor and sacrifices the jet flight of church growth could never have left the church, the earth. Most of these people will never make the headline and their names will not appear in disciples who's who. Remember, however, the folks, what the Lord says to his disciples. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. Most of all, I'd like to thank my family, my charming wife, Kunsun, for always being with me and encouraging, still loving me in my retirement. <laughs> To my children, Gideon and Susie, and Gaylord and Jenny, for their unwavering, untiring, unconditional, unlimited support. Wow, all kinds of un, un, un. <laughs> Tonight, my two lovely grandkids, Jonathan and Emily, are here too. Where are you, Emily? Hey, she's <laughs> laughing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> to God honor and glory I give. And thank you, all of you again, from the bottom of my heart. May God bless you all and may pet. Thank you. <laughs>